Live from the Scripps Studios, this is 10 News. A deadly crash unfolded at a known trouble spot in Claremont. Good evening, I'm Steve Atkinson. And I'm Lindsay Pena. One person was killed this afternoon when a Lexus and Tesla collided at Genesee Avenue and Chateau Drive. One of those cars almost hit a nearby home. 10 News reporter Michael Chen is joining us with new details. Michael, that homeowner wants the city to take action. Yeah, neighbors clearly frustrated. There are car parts scattered everywhere. Take a look at this front yard. Those two lights are from a Tesla. Now walk with me a couple feet. This is what remains of a brick wall that surrounds this corner house. This is also the spot where that Tesla landed. Now just past 1230 this afternoon, police say a silver Lexus on Chateau tried to turn left on a red arrow crashing into a Tesla heading north on Genesee. The driver of the Lexus, a 57 year old man, was not wearing a seatbelt and died from the impact. The driver of the Tesla that crashed into the wall, a 73 year old man taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Now, Bonnie Alexander, the daughter of the homeowner, says she was about 10 feet away on the other side of a fence, letting her dogs out. When she heard the loud crash, she raced out trying to help and, and did help get the wedged in Tesla driver out of the car. She says this is the fifth time in 10 years her brick wall has been damaged from an accident as cars try to beat the lights on busy Genesee. We're hoping to get a guardrail put in in front of my house. We can't tell you how many times this has happened. People just don't slow down. Slingshot right through the right through the intersection, hoping they can make it. And they just and they just T-bone. Everybody gets T-boned here all the time. Back out live, Alexander says her family was actually set to put up Christmas decorations in this exact spot at the at that time, but her sister was late. So they decided to postpone it until, thankfully postpone it until tonight. Investigators say that neither DUI nor speed are believed to be factors in the crash. We're live in Claremont, Michael Chen, 10 News. All right, thank you, Michael. A bicyclist is dead after a collision today on the 76. That cyclist was going west near Thoroughbred Lane in Bonzel when there was a collision with a car. The biker was thrown off. Medics tried CPR. We're told the victim is a 63-year-old man from Colorado. The driver pulled over a little ways down the road and called CHP. Investigators are looking for witnesses to help piece together what happened. New child sex abuse allegations against a former priest with the Catholic Diocese of San Diego. Convicted child molester Father Edward Rodrigue has more than 150 accusers against him. Our tennis reporter Rena Nakano joins us on this story. And Rena, with the help of, of new law, four new accusers have now come forward. Yeah, that's right, Steve. They're coming out now thanks to the new law AB 218 that goes into effect January 1st, 2020. But uh, we talked to a person who basically said in 40 years, he never told anyone but he's ready to talk now. It's not for the money. It's for what's right. You couldn't write a movie like this. It's the reality that these two grown men say they lived when they were altar boys under the guidance of Father Edward Anthony Rodrigue. I'm 62 years old and uh, finally found the willpower to talk to the public. Marvin Main is one of four new people accusing Father Rodrigue of sexual abuse. They're now suing the Catholic Diocese of San Diego and San Bernardino for sexual battery and negligence. They're able to do so because of AB 218, which temporarily lifts the statute of limitations. As of January 2020, there will be a three year, what we call revival window, a window of opportunity for people like Marvin and David to bring a lawsuit. In 1963, Father Rodrigue started his career at Mary Star of the Sea in La Jolla, but he was moved within two years. Then to Lakeside, Encinitas, Calexico, Poway, and many more. Every time he was accused of sexual abuse, his superiors would simply move him to another location. A total of 150 children accused him of abuse. David Tirado says he still has nightmares. Us as little kids, we thought, well, he's just being affectionate until he took us to his room in El Centro and did what he did. Get him drunk, show him porn, engaging in all kinds of 
very, very aggressive, deviant sexual behavior. Father Rodrigue was removed from the priesthood in 1992. In 98, he was sentenced to a 10-year prison sentence for molesting a developmentally disabled boy when he was a janitor at an apartment complex. He died in 2009. But these men say his horrifying legacy lives on, and that's why they're asking others like them to come forward and face the truth. I don't think anybody's above the law. And if you don't say the truth, you're lying. Now, the Catholic Diocese of San Diego sent 10 News the statement that reads in part, quote, our hearts and prayers and deepest apologies go out to his victims and all victims of clergy sex abuse. The attorneys say they will file this lawsuit on January 2nd. Reporting live in Claremont, I'm Rena Nakano, 10 News. Thank you, Rena. New developments involving Poway restaurant owners who lost business during the boil water order. They're getting some extra help. And as 10 News reporter Marie Cornell explains, the county will be reimbursing some costs. The vote was unanimous, and now some businesses in Poway will get that extra help that they need. That motion passes unanimously with all board members who are present voting aye. And with the unanimous vote, the County Board of Supervisors has decided to give some businesses in Poway some financial support, reimbursing those who paid for a modified health permit. 21 businesses out of 190 that had to close its doors because of the boil water ordinance in Poway paid $459 to get their businesses up and running, even before the advisory was lifted, operating under restricted conditions selling food that required minimal to no food preparation. For many, this was the only way to keep their businesses afloat. Well, it's really bad. Yeah, it's really bad. And also, you're losing customers, you know. And then when you open, it's going to be slow because, you know, people are not, it's not routine anymore. So to help with that, Supervisor Diane Jacob proposed giving them their money back. The restaurant owners and employees in Poway were hit hard with the county covering just under $10,000. The county's way, she says, of supporting the businesses in Poway. It's not a lot of money. Very little bit helps when you have suffered losses during the last week. So uh, and to a lot of them, it's a big deal. The city of Poway is also doing their part in trying to help these businesses. They're promoting a restaurant month, which kicks off today. From Kearney Mesa, Marie Cornell. 10 News. Doctors are once again protesting at the border. They're trying to convince Customs and Border Protection to let them give flu shots to detainees. Protesters use sidewalk chalk to write the names of children who have died in CBP custody. This comes just 24 hours after six people, including five doctors, were arrested during a protest yesterday. They say they're just trying to get proper medical care to people who need it. We have asked for Border Patrol to allow us into their facilities to give flu vaccinations. We're ready to mobilize at any moment. We have everything we need. They just need to say yes, but so far we've been denied. A CBP spokesperson tells 10 News they share the concern about the well-being of those in custody, but that it has never been the policy of the agency to give vaccines to detainees. Well, there finally might be significant action to stop the Tijuana sewage spills that pour into the South Bay. The spills have plagued the Tijuana River Valley for decades. Today, it was revealed that a trade deal agreed to yesterday includes $300 million to tackle the problem. San Diego's congressional delegation worked to get the money included in the trade agreement that will replace NAFTA. Supporters say the deal took a lot of work over the last year. You need collaboration to then implement the work because it is a binational project, right? So you need to have that the relationship, the friendship and the collaboration. And this agreement actually is an agreement of collaboration. The next step is to prioritize how to spend the money. The 300 million will be used over the next four years. There is new information about a multi-million dollar settlement Harvey Weinstein has agreed to with a number of his alleged sexual misconduct victims. That settlement would not require Weinstein to admit any wrongdoing. As ABC's Megan Tavrizian reports, this comes just weeks before his criminal trial was set to start. Today, a legal victory for the victims of Hollywood media mogul Harvey Weinstein. A multi-million dollar civil settlement involving Weinstein, his former movie company, and several women who've accused him of sex crimes. According to the New York Times, a settlement would not require Weinstein to admit wrongdoing 
or pay anything to his accusers himself. A New York judge raised Harvey Weinstein's bail package from $1 million to $5 million. This following claims he violated his ankle bracelet monitoring requirements. Prosecutors alleged Weinstein violated the conditions of his release by leaving his home without the piece of the device that keeps it activated. The 67-year-old will stand trial on rape and sexual assault charges starting January 6th. Just because a woman makes a claim does not mean that it is true. And just because Mr. Weinstein is accused of a crime does not mean that he is guilty. Weinstein has pleaded not guilty, arguing the acts were consensual. If convicted, Weinstein faces up to 25 years in prison. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. And we are learning more about yesterday's deadly terrorist attack in New Jersey. Investigators now say the Jewish market where the attack took place was targeted. It all started when a police officer questioned two people who then killed him. Investigators say the people then drove a stolen truck to the market. They opened fire and then went inside. Three more victims inside were killed. There was a gun battle for hours. The two suspects were eventually found dead inside. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio addressed the shooting. This confirms a sad truth. There is a crisis of anti-Semitism gripping this nation. Investigators also revealed the suspects had a pipe bomb in their truck. They are believed to be members of the Black Israelites, which has an extreme wing considered to be anti-Semitic. Now to a developing story, the FBI's investigation into the 2016 Trump campaign. Today, the Justice Department's Inspector General testified about the origins and findings of his two-year-long probe. As ABC's Rachel Scott reports, this comes after the report found political bias was not a factor, but did uncover serious performance failures. It was a high stakes and highly anticipated report on the origins of the Russia investigation and possible links to the Trump campaign. And now the agency's watchdog behind it is telling lawmakers about his findings. We found that Crossfire Hurricane was open for an authorized investigative purpose and with sufficient factual predication. The Justice Department's Inspector General Michael Horowitz testifying in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee about his review of the Russia investigation. Today's hearing comes just days after his report revealed his conclusions that the FBI had enough evidence to warrant the probe, pointing to either a federal crime or a threat to national security or both. We did not find documentary or testimonial evidence that indicated political bias or improper motivation. Rejecting claims from President Trump and others who have long said the Russia investigation was all a witch hunt. But the inspector general also issued a critical assessment, stating FBI officials made serious errors and omissions in applying for surveillance warrants to monitor the communications of a Trump campaign associate, Carter Page. President Trump on the campaign trail last night pouncing. The inspector general found that the FBI's spying application contains 17 errors and omissions commonly known as lies and deceit. The attorney general telling NBC News. I felt this was very flimsy. Did attorney general Barr provide any evidence that caused you to alter this key finding that the FBI investigation had an adequate predicate? Uh, no, we stand by our finding. In the hearing today, Republicans holding the line. Whether you like Trump, hate Trump, don't care about Trump, you look at this as more than a few irregularities. And Democrats pushing back. The FBI investigation was motivated by facts, not bias. And there's not just a divide between Republicans and Democrats. There's also a divide shaping up between two of President Trump's handpicked officials. The attorney general is saying that there must have been some bias, but the FBI director says that the Trump campaign was not unfairly targeted. Rachel Scott, ABC News, Capitol Hill.